and individual sports is in the triumph. Instead of celebrating alone, hockey players share their joy with 20 brothers, all having bonded through sacrifice, pain, and ultimately, the glory. On Thursday night, Randolph won the New Jersey Public School Championship and Bergen Catholic the parochial title. Tonight, one of these teams gets the perfecta. The New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association and the New Jersey Devils present the high school hockey state championships. Coming up, it's the parochial school champion, the Bergen Catholic Crusaders, taking on the public school champ, the Randolph Rams. Hello, everyone. I'm Mick Monaghoff, joined by Pete Caggiano. Glad you could join us on the Yes Network tonight for this Tournament of Champions final. Well, Pete, the seeding committee did their job, and the teams have lived up to all expectations as we have the top two seeds going head-to-head -head here tonight. It's their chance to shine at the middle ends. Mick, this is what it's all about. This is why the players get up for that 6 a.m. practice. This is why they play in those cold outdoor rinks, to play in this game, in this building here tonight. Now, let's talk about the combatants. The Randolph Rams come into this after winning their first-ever public championship, but it's the first time center stage in a TOC final. Could they feel some jitters here tonight? No, I don't think so, Mick. They have 10 seniors on the team. And during the 5-0 run here in the playoffs, outscored their opponents by a margin of 30-5. to And nobody's been bigger, nobody's been better than Dan Pensinger, the senior. Four goals, one assist in the game the other night against Bur Brick Memorial. 39 tallies on the year. Just an outstanding player. Real nice kid, too. No doubt about it, but they'll need all kind of scoring out of Pensinger tonight because Bergen Catholic comes in as the top team all year long in the state of New Jersey. They won this overall championship back in 2001, and their defense is sparkling, giving up just three goals throughout the tournament. Mick, they're trying to do something that only three teams in New Jersey have ever done, scored a hat trick. They won the Gordon Cup, their league championship. They won the parochial championship. Now they're going for the tournament of champions, sort of the triple crown, you could say. But you mentioned their defense. Jason May, the coach's son, he's the anchor on the blue line. Ten goals on this season. Had a big assist the other night in the game against Seton Hall in the game-winning goal. A little banged up right now. Has a bad arm. Expect him to play about 30 of the 45 minutes tonight. Well, as you mentioned, we'll keep an eye on the matchup of Jason May and Dan Pensinger. They are the best two players on the ice, and a winner of that individual battle could give their team a leg up and the overall championship. But when we come back in just a moment, we'll continue with our pregame festivities. Mary Beth Petriella will join us with all her comments and more. Stay with us tonight. Yankees baseball is back on Yes as the Yankees aim to hit their mark and shoot down the high-flying Blue Jays. Join Michael Kay and Ken Singleton for complete game coverage starting Thursday at 1, part of the March of Champions, only on Yes. What's it worth? One record mantle didn't break. I have almost as much power left-handed as I do right-handed. Plus, a Duke fan's dream ball and the Donnie baseball action figure with batting glove grip on an all-new What's It Worth. Premiering Friday night at 11, only on Yes. Need more? For everything Yankees, there's only one place to turn. The Yes Network. The Yes Network brings you over 130 games from the 26-time world champion Yankees. That's more than 130 chances to see every pitch, every hit, every thrilling moment of Yankees baseball. It's New York's premier sports franchise on New York's premier sports network. The New York Yankees on Yes. Play ball. Sponsored locally by JMK BMW Springfield. Technogenesis. Technogenesis. Smart growth. The battle to contain suburban sprawl. Join me each week for a look into the future of science and technology. Technogenesis. Technogenesis. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern on CN8. CN8, the Comcast Network. 
recognized this year for broadcast excellence and proud recipient of 32 Tele Awards. Award-winning television. CN8 Smart TV for curious people. Here at the Continental Airlines Arena, we're getting set to drop the puck on the 2003 New Jersey High School Hockey Tournament of Champions game. Certainly these two teams have had to face their share of rivals to get to this point, but now it's the coach's turn. Dan Mayer, Bergen Catholic, and Richie McLaughlin of Randolph grew up playing against each other here in New Jersey, and theirs is a rivalry punctuated by respect. When summertime came around, we used to hang out and uh, play together in the summer. We always had a good time. He's a very good hockey player and a uh, very competitive guy. Uh, Danny was a tremendous player. He plays just like his team does. He's quick and he's smart, and that's how they play. I guess we're supposed to win, but, you know, one game, we're uh, big believers that uh, anything can happen in one game. And, you know, Richie does a good job. We watched his team play the other night, and it should be a good hockey game. We represent every public school in the state, I think, today. And, yeah, we're underdogs every time you play a private school, parochial school. Once a game starts, uh, you know, unless I bump in him in between periods, he, he becomes the enemy. So there'll, there'll be no looking at each other. So when the puck drops, the friendship stops. And now I'll turn it over to our public address announcer, Tony Maraconda, for our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, as we stand for the singing of the national anthem, please join us in a moment of hope for a quick resolution to the conflict in Iraq and the safe return of our men and women in the armed forces. Now please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. our national anthem and we are just moments away from the start of the Randolph Rams and Bergen Catholic Crusaders. Rich McLaughlin gets ready to go and here's our starting goalies Stephen Ritter for Here Bergen Catholic between the pipes tonight 17 saves on 18 Thanks. shots in the semifinal. Nick doing an outstanding job in their playoffs 0.75 goals against average throughout the tournament. And on the other side Kyle Fennerty. 18 and three this year with six shutouts to his credit. Oh, he's just been outstanding. Again, a real stalwart, a tremendous player for Randolph between the pipes. Now behind the bench, you see Dan May in his fifth year as a head coach of Bergen Catholic, 10 years for Rich McLaughlin of Randolph. And we are set for the opening faceoff. Anthony Randazzo will take the draw and he wins it for Bergen Catholic. Bergen Catholic starts with its top line of Doug Lunau, Anthony Randazzo, and John Jafrito. Here's a shot. It whistles wide, and covering up is Steven Ritter. Quick move right away off the opening drop by Randolph, getting off the shot. Here we take a look at Pensinger. He'll be trying to beat that man right there, Steven Ritter. Pensinger, four goals, one assist in the game against Brick Memorial the other night. Snow on the faceoff for Randolph. Doesn't win the draw. Goes back in a corner. And DeFrito wheels at the red line. Comes to the blue line, makes a nice move, comes on in on the backhand, has it knocked off his stick. Quick backhander goes to the backboard. And now Kevin Snow will start out. Up shot right back in. And it is Tony Rossi who comes up with the loose disc and sends it back the other way. Jason May circles in his own zone. Plays forward into neutral ice. 
And now they just roll it into the Randolph end. But the play offside. Anthony Randazzo, just a stride ahead of the play, comes into tonight's game. 34 goals, 64 points. He was pretty much shut down the other night by Seton Hall Prep. They shadowed him very well. It would be a little more difficult for Randolph to do that tonight. Randazzo is a great skater. You take a look at his numbers. 64 points this year. On the faceoff, Casey Goodwin wins it. Draws it back to Mark Zanutis, who works from behind his own net with Michael O'Brien. Now comes to Keo. Rink wide pass. Brett Bendazian takes a shot. And first save for Carol Fennerty tonight. Bendazian going for the far side. Fennerty just got the edge of the stick out. Put the puck into the corner. Here's Keo. Rolls it into the zone, but it comes right back to center. They'll tag up. The play now back on side. And Randolph comes to the neutral zone. Sylvester just rolls it in. Ritter shoots it to the corner. Now quickly back the other way. Long lead pass ahead for Matt Rutch, who goes in the corner. He'll try to dig it out. He's working with a line of O'Connell and Preza Izzo. But let's go downstairs to Mary Beth. He has more on Jason May. Mary Beth? Yes, guys. Well, apparently, as, you, as you've already reported, Jason May was hitting the right arm on, uh, in, in the championship game for the Pro Girls. Uh, apparently, that must have hit a nerve because he was having tremendous pain, and he said that it prevented him from concentrating and being effective in the defensive zone. Yeah, all yesterday, he didn't skate. He iced it and watched the Brick Memorial Randolph game, and he said he's feeling much better now, and he's ready to take on Randolph for the championship. Back to you. All right, thanks very much, Mary Beth. There's a shot from well outside. It was easily sticked aside by Ritter. And now back the other way in a hurry comes Doug Lunau. Puck goes right behind Dan Pensinger, who couldn't pick it up. Return pass for Pensinger. Just a little too far ahead. And Lunau will roll this into the far corner. Kuhlberg and Catholic. Rossi back with Mahaffey. Nick, both teams doing a good job of finishing their check. After the opposing player gives up the puck, they're taking him out of the play. Pensinger. Hangs the puck off the board himself, but has his pocket picked by Randazzo. Gets the puck to Lunau. Shot knocked down defensively, but it comes right in the slot. And it is Dan Pensinger who picks it up and races back two on two the other way. Comes back with Snow. Tries to sidestep his man, but he was broken up nicely. And it comes back the other way with Randazzo. Anthony Randazzo. Drop pass here for Graffito. Takes a shot. from Anthony Randazzo, and it's 1-0 for Bergen Catholic. John Giofrido scores the first goal of the game, but it's Anthony Randazzo that sets it up. Not only does he drop the puck for his teammate, he continues to the net. He screens the goaltender. When we get a better look at it, you'll see as they break out of their own end. This is Randazzo, crossed the blue line, now drops it. He continues to go. Look at your screen. He's right in front of the goaltender when the puck goes in the net. And Bergen Catholic jumps out early. So Gofrido gets the goal from Anthony Randazzo. That'll be his 28th goal of the season. 1-0 Bergen Catholic with 11.42 to go here in our opening period on the Yes Network tonight. Car of the Year. Brilliantly equipped for 31.195. This is how Bergen Catholic did it. Randazzo drops it. Joffredo comes in, takes the quick wrist shot, beating Finnerty over his right shoulder, and there you see the happy player. So Joffredo gets the goal, had four assists in the semifinals, and likes the lap here tonight. Here's a shot by Keo, it is off the blocker of Fennerty. The Bergen Catholic keeping the pressure on with a 1-0 lead with 11.28 to go here in our first period. Now 
Alex Faye starts out from behind his own net, tries to get it to the blue line, but that's broken up by Brett Mendazio. Long lead pass too far ahead. Play continues. Zimmers tries to get the puck ahead, but Mendazio will shoot it right back in. Dana Becker in his own end. Goes rink wide here for Sean Sylvester. Sylvester backhands it into the zone, and Randolph wants a change. Good play on the offensive end, though, by Carr Kappa to keep the pressure on as he takes it in the corner and tries to tie up the loose puck. Goldberg and Catholic going to rush out. Here comes Brian Schultz. Schultz ahead of the field. Pulled down from behind. No calls. The puck goes into the corner. And Mickey tried to split the defense. Each one of the two defensemen got a piece of them one at a time, took them down. Back to the point. Here is a shot that goes well wide off the stick of O'Donnell. Bergen Catholic keeping the pressure on here in our first 15-minute session. Finally, the puck lifted the length of the ice, and this will be icing against Randolph. They had to get the puck out of the offensive end and just cool things down a little bit. Exactly so, Mick. Bergen Catholic putting a lot of pressure all around Kyle Finnerty. Watch some of this action from just a little earlier. Look as he tries to come in. Both guys sandwich, and one guy takes him high. The other guy takes him low, puts him into the corner hard. And Brian Schultz, just a sophomore playing for head coach Dan May, Bergen Catholic. Randolph wins the draw, and they'll try to start out. Here comes Kevin Snow. He's got a good shot. Comes across the line, rolls it in the corner. Ritter just dumps it to the near boards. Back to the point. The happy keeps it in. But the puck deflects up and over the glass and into the crowd out of play. Faceoff will come in. Bergen Catholic in. Hensinger, 39 goals, 46 assists for 85 points this year. Coming off a hat trick. He also has eight playoff goals so far this year. And it's his 18th birthday today. But right now it's not a happy birthday as his team trails by a score of one nothing. At least not yet, Mick. Still a lot of time to go. He's had an outstanding playoff. 10 goals, 12 assists for 22 points. On the draw, it's controlled by Bergen Catholic. Jason May in his own end, playing with that sewer right arm. Gets it ahead to center, but Hensinger picks it right out of midair and plays forward for Snow. Good defensive effort, though, by O'Donnell to break that up and keep it in the neutral zone. Good play both ways in center ice. Now Mahaffey in his own end, being dogged by Lunau, gets it ahead. 1-0 with 9.25 to go. The shot's 4-2 in favor of Bergen Catholic. Pass on the far wing. Nice pack. Oh, right in front. The rebound is stopped by Fennerty. What a great setup by Lunau as he just got the puck to Randazzo right in the slot. Nick, you have to credit Tony Rossi. He came in and took out the Bergen Catholic player as he was trying to jam the rebound right in front of Kyle Finnerty. Wow, Lunau with a behind the back pass. Ooh, and four players collide right near the blue line, and it turns into a two-on-two -two the other way for Snow. With blue. Snow comes on in. Oh, and he just rolled it past the open corner. He couldn't quite get a hold of it. He beat this player. He beat the defenseman. Tried to get around, but the puck just slipped off his, slip, his stick and harmlessly went through the crease. Come back the other way. This puck goes the length of the ice, and it's icing. And we will take a timeout. Bergen Catholic with a 1-0 lead over Randolph. And yes, the bodies are flying here at the Meadowlands tonight. You know, opportunities like this don't come around every day. Like a $249 per month lease on the 2003 Altima at the Nissan Springs sales event. The thrill of driving a new Nissan. Now it's your turn. Well, tomorrow night, Area High School Basketball Championships right here on Yes. The battle for New Jersey heats up when the Garden State's best teams shoot for the ultimate prize. First, it's the girls' title game at 6, followed by the boys' championship game at 8. New Jersey High School Basketball Championships start live tomorrow night at 6, right here on Yes. All right, here's our hockey championship final with Bergen Catholic out front of Randolph. 1-0 face off in the Bergen Catholic end, and the Crusaders control it. And it comes to Tom Keo. He's got a pretty hard shot. Gets it ahead to center. They dump right back in. Alex Bay 
along with John Sylvester for Randolph. They're out in the puck, right near the red line, and then just dump it back in. Michael O'Brien in his own zone. Rose at the center. Finally picked up here by Zimmers. So far, Randolph has done a nice job of picking up the loose pucks in the neutral zone and keeping the pressure in the Bergen Catholic end. But here's a breakout attempt. And it goes to Giblin. Giblin takes his man hard near the boards, gets it back. Now he'll go in the corner and try to dig it out. Nice return pass here for Bendazian. He throws a backhander in. It just dribbles in on the goalie. And Fennerty makes the save. Bergen Catholic a little stronger here tonight, playing a little tougher, taking the body a lot better, kind of putting Randolph a little bit off their game. Watch some of this action. Good job in the corner. That's Casey Giblin making the centering pass. Weak shot on goal, but you know what? Kyle Fennerty says, I need the timeout. I need the whistle. I'm going to hang on. Now, early on, any save is a big save for a goal. Got to get your rhythm. Buck goes in the corner as Randolph wins the draw. And they're going to try to hit it to Lairhoff, but it comes back to the point. May takes a shot. He scores! Jason May winds up from just inside the blue line. His 11th goal of the year, just like that. 2-0 for Bergen Catholic. Jason May had enough time to have a bagel and a cup of coffee at the point. He was standing there all alone. He had time to tee this puck up. It starts with the turnover. There you see the giveaway. May from the top of the point on the right-hand side of your screen, keeping the puck low right on the ice. Beats Kyle Finnerty. Again, great form on the slap shot. Big wind-up, great follow-through. When you have that much time, that's what you can do. So Jason May gets the goal, his 11th of the season. And it's 2-0 for Bergen Catholic. Nothing wrong with that sore arm right now, Pete Caggiano. No, not at all. He used every bit of his arms, his shoulders, his back into that shot. He blistered one by Cal Finnerty. Preziosi also picks up an assist on the Bergen Catholic goal at 724. Randolph has to come back. They try a centering pass. It's broken up, and we have a two on two coming back the other way. Good effort by Grafrida, who throws it through the slot, but nobody home on the near wing. Now Snow throws it to the point. May will keep that in. Gets it ahead here for Lunau, who throws it in front. Just gets thick to side. Bergen Catholic out front, 2-0. They're keeping the pressure on in the Randolph end. But here's an interception, and it's one-on-one -on -one back the other way. Here comes Michael Lou. He'll race to the corner, get there first, throws it out in front. Snow was in the crease, but never got the shot away. Rossi throws it to the net, just tipped wide by Michael Wu. Bergen Catholic weathers that storm, and Jason May will start out. Notice he doesn't give the puck up right away, Pete. Takes his time. Smart player looking for a wing to break. He got close to the red line, knew if he threw it close to a Randolph player, he would get away without being pulled for icing. So the shots on goal, 9-2 for Bergen Catholic already. We still have 6 9 to play here in this first period. Bergen Catholic gets the puck back. And Ensinger is dumped as he touches the, rather, that's Bay dumped as he touches it near center ice. Again, Nick, Bergen Catholic following through on their checks, taking the body every chance they get. They're wearing down Randall the same way they wore down Seton Hall prep the other night. And Dazian takes a slap shot. That's knocked down defensively. Sylvester wants to get it ahead. Broke up the play near the blue line. Bergen Catholic controls in the neutral zone. Sean Mahaffey rolls the puck into the Bergen Catholic end. Back to pick it up in a hurry. Mark Zanudis. Plays forward here for Schultz. Pinched along the near boards. Picked up and sent right back in by Christian Valvano. Michael O'Brien avoids a check from behind the net. Now does Alex Bay, who picks it up, puts a puck on his forehand. Throws it to the far boards. Sets up in front of the net. With two Randall players dumped in front of the net. That's why Faye couldn't do anything with the puck in the corner. He was looking to center it. Both his teammates were laying on the ice. Bergen Catholic doing a nice job of clearing people out in front of the goalie. And in a game like this, you're not going to see those penalty calls unless it stops the scoring opportunity or they're going to be injurious. They're going to let him play. Becker will shoot this in. Ritter can't catch up to it. 
Denudis is hit hard along the boards. Now Pensinger reaches for the loose puck behind the net. Tries to sidestep a check from O'Brien, but couldn't do it. Puck intercepted. Shot the length of the ice. And no icing called. I don't know why they waved that off unless it did hit a player in the neutral zone. I didn't see it from this angle, but our officials are a lot closer. I didn't either. I was looking for a whistle. It didn't come. 4.08 to play here in this first period. 2-0 Bergen Catholic. Cafrito trying to bank a pass off the boards to himself. Almost got away with it. Now Jason May in his own end. Gets it ahead. Here comes Randazzo across the line. Here's a shot. Score! And a back hitter. John Cafrito picks up his second goal of the game. This one comes from Randazzo as well. And it's 3-0 for Bergen Catholic. The top line has it in high gear tonight. They're doing everything we saw, we expected them to do. Randazzo taking control of the game offensively. Again, laying out that beautiful pass for John Gerfredo. Watch as he comes over the blue line. Just a little dippy move right there. Comes in, forehand, backhand, and it's by Kyle Finnerty. Again, better look. You see him pull from his backhand, excuse me, from his forehand to his backhand. By that time, Kyle had already committed himself. Easy goal, open net for John Gerfredo. Bergen Catholic with three unanswered goals here in this first period with 3.40 to play. May will pick up an assist as well on the goal. 3-0 for Bergen Catholic. Great offensive display to start the game, Pete. Mick, in the open, we talked about the defense of Bergen Catholic. We don't want to ignore the offense. We're seeing it here. They've been explosive all season. Happy just shoots it in. Sylvester tries to throw it in front, but nobody home. And Dazzing gonna pick it up and gonna get a three on two back the other way if they hurry. And Dazzing it on the left wing. Tries to go inside the defender, ridden off nicely, and it goes to the far corner. Finally picked up and cleared by Mahaffey. Back comes Alex Bay, who will just roll it in as Randolph wants a change on the fly. O'Brien hit along the boards, but did get it ahead. Tony Rossi in his own end. Shoots the puck all the way to the blue line. This play is onside. Here's a shot saved by Ritter, but not out of the zone. Mahaffey winds up with a drive, and that hit a defenseman. Dangerous play. Ritter let that rebound hang, rebound hang out right in front of the crease, about 10 feet in front of the net. Good job by the Bergen Catholic defense to clear the puck. Now Ben Dazian just rolled this puck into the zone where Mahaffey has to go back and pick it up. Base board here for Lairhoff. He has hit along the boards as he rolls it into the Bergen Catholic end. May with a full head of steam. Gets it ahead here for Prezioso. Prezioso comes across the line. He takes a shot. That stick the side by Fennerty. Good pressure by Bergen Catholic. Finally, Becker gets the puck toward the blue line. And they are really going after Pensinger. He, anytime he gets near the puck, they put a body on him. That's what you have to do when a player's that good, when he can skate and shoot that well, you have to be physical with him. Zimmers rolls it into the near end. Now Snow gets there. Throws it back to the point for Becker. Becker takes a shot, knocked down nicely at the defense by Prezioso, and cleared. So Prezioso lays out, and we have a whistle. 128 to go in our first period. 3-0, Bergen Catholic, two goals by John Gifrido so far today. For the NBA's best, it's nothing but Nets. Wednesday, Kenyon Martin and the Nets look to get the Knicks in a twist and drive New York back across the Hudson. Join Fred Hickman for complete pregame coverage Wednesday starting at 7, part of the March of Champions, only on Yes. The class of high school hoops is on Yes as the March of Champions presents the Tournament of Champions. First, Malcolm X Shabazz takes on Marlboro for the girls' title. Then St. Patrick takes on Camden Catholic for the boys' championship. The New Jersey High School Basketball Championship. Tomorrow, starting at 6, only on Yes. John Gifredo, the sophomore, only 5'7", 165, but he has two tallies here tonight, two big goals. He combines with Anthony Randazzo like peanut butter and jelly. I'll tell you, he has had it working showing his skills. Both of those shots had to go forehand to backhand and sometimes back again. Showing his good stick work so far tonight. That's the mark of a good player when they can read the defenseman, read the goaltender, know whether do I shoot now or do I hold, pull back, and come in with the other side. He's done it twice. 
128 to go here in this first period. Face off on the Bergen Catholic end to the right of Ritter. Snow to take the draw against Randazzo. Snow's getting thrown out of the face off because one of his players jumped into the circle early. Face off those controlled by Randazzo and Bergen Catholic has the puck. A 3 0 lead early on. And McNair was a situation because Randazzo was hanging in center ice, the defenseman had to cheat back. Rodney Zimmers couldn't play up on the blue line to keep that puck in because Randazzo was hanging at the red line right at center ice and he had to keep an eye on it. Good scoring opportunity went by the boards as Randolph couldn't keep the puck in the zone and here comes Graffito. Comes across the line, throws it in front, looking for Lunau and just missed on that. Lunau takes his man into the boards. Here's Graffito, throws it in front, oh, the flexion off of Randazzo. Stick the side by Fennerty. Wow, that was a great shot and even better save by Fennerty. Here comes Pensinger, takes a drive and that's a save for Ritter. Ritter matching Tit for tat with his partner. Great job using the left pad to stop that shot from the slot. Cafrito puts on the brakes. Tries to go past the defenseman, but Becker rides him off the play nicely. And here comes Sylvester. John Sylvester across the line. Takes the shot. Stick the side easily by Stephen Ritter. Now behind it after 14 seconds to go in the period. Randolph would like to freeze this buck and get a face off. And maybe get a quick one-timer. And there's the whistle. We'll get just that with 6.4 on the clock. Jason May taking no chance. He says, you know what? I'll just hold on to this. I have confidence in my team. I have confidence in my goaltender. I don't mind a whistle with just six seconds remaining deep in my defensive zone. Time it up for a face-off and one quick shot. But Jason May and company have done a good job defensively. And offensively. Jason has one of the goals tonight. Time ticks away. Three seconds. It comes to the neutral zone, and that should do it. Our first period is in the books with Bergen Catholic leading by a score of 3-0 over Randolph. Big Bergen Catholic a little stronger, a little more physical. Randolph still in the game, but they have to pick up their offensive. Only five shots on goal so far here in the first period. They have to get more shots in front of Ritter. They have to put the puck on net. So once again, our score, 3-0 here at the end of the first period. But don't forget, Thursday afternoon on, yes, the division champion, New York Yankees, welcome the Toronto Blue Jays for a preview of their season opening series. Complete coverage begins at 1. Michael Kay and Ken Singleton call the action from Legends Field. Blue Jays versus the Yankees, Thursday afternoon starting at 1, only on, yes. Let's go downstairs to Mary Beth standing by with Jason May. Jason, take me through that goal that you got. It seems like you had a really open look. Yeah, uh, all, all game they've been just throwing the puck to their uh, short side wing, and we have that high guy crash in there. It, it just trickled through somehow, and I wound up. I saw I had a little more time, so I held it, and then I just shot it. And it, so, I guess it looked like that. I, there was a big screen in front. We had guys crashing through the middle, and I just held it for a second and then shot it. So. Well, it appears that that arm of yours is feeling better. Tell us how that injury is doing. Uh, it's feeling a little better. It's still hurting a little bit, but, you know, it's my last game in high school, so I just wanted to give it all I had. Thanks. Pain or no pain. Thanks, Jason. Back. And now, with the score of th Bergen Catholic 3, Randolph 0, we'll be right back. The dominating force in European soccer, Manchester United, pursues another English Premier League title on Yes. Thursday at 9.30, the Red Devils take on Aston Villa. Then get the latest with Red Hot News plus Man U versus Fulham. Thursday on Yes. The Yes Network kicks off the second century of Yankees baseball with Yankees 2003. Get a preview of the season ahead, catch up on your favorite players, and get to know the newest Bronx Bombers. Yankees 2003, tomorrow at noon, only on Yes. We are back here at Continental Airlines Arena. Our first intermission, Bergen Catholic having their way over the Randolph Rams. 3-0 to 
through the first 15 minutes. And when you take a look at the scoring summary, John Jofrito from Randazzo at 308, then Jason May in a big slap shot from the point, and Jofrito again, this time from Randazzo and May, the top scoring line and the defensemen doing their job. We've heard all year long that Bergen Catholic is the number one team in the state. And Pete Caggiano, they played like it in this first period. Well, they sure did, Mick. And offensively, they were superb, doing a great job with shots on goal, doing a great job getting the puck all around the net. They played a complete period. But probably the most impressive thing that they did, even not in the offensive end, they finished off every check. Any time that a Randolph player had his stick on the puck, somebody was paying the price for it. Sometimes even when they didn't have their stick on the puck, they paid the price for it. Bergen Catholic took the body every chance they had. Many times you saw a blue jersey laying flat on the ice. Let's take a look at our first period highlights, and it's all Bergen Catholic. John Jafrito opened the scoring for the Crusaders. Just a great play, drop pass from Randazzo. He beats the goalie up over the right shoulder, and that gave Bergen Catholic the one to nothing lead. And then turnovers, that's what happens. This is Jason May, big booming slap shot from the point. Puts it home at that time, 2-0 Bergen Catholic. And then the razzle-dazzle move, Joe Fredo scoring his second of the evening on a great pass from Randazzo. And it looks like commanding lead for Bergen Catholic. Shots on goal tell the story. 12 shots on goal for Bergen Catholic. Randazzo with three, Perfredo with two, and he scored on both of them. And Bendazian, pretty good shots as well. And Randolph, well, just five shots on goal. Rossi had two, and he's a defenseman, so those shots are coming from a long distance from the point. Well, that's because the traffic in front of the net has been absolutely tremendous and very good for Bergen Catholic. Well, we've seen a lot of high school players making their names for themselves right here on this ice tonight at the Meadowlands, but some of the other players who have gone before them have also made a name for themselves and gone on to bigger and better things. A chance to look at some of the Jersey boys who have really gone to the forefront and probably the guy who is the poster child of hockey players in the Garden State has to be Jim Dow. Familiar to everyone in New Jersey, a member of the Devils Stanley Cup winning team in 95. You know, but he started his career playing for Brick High School in the Shore Conference. From there, went on to Lake Superior State and NCAA Championship. Now he's in the playoffs again with Minnesota. So looking to make some noise with the Wild. Well, when he was here in 94 and 95, that was a short strike season. He only played 10 games for the Devils, scoring one goal. But Coach Jack LeMaire had confidence in him, put him in a lineup during the playoffs, and I guess the rest is history. Jim Dowd has been a winner no matter where he has laced him up. Obviously, he is the kind of guy that every high school player aspires to be in the state of New Jersey. Well, we'll come back with more intermission activity from the Metal Ass, but it's all Bergen Catholic, 3 nothing over Randolph. Weekday afternoons, get the inside line with Mike and the Mad Dog on Yes. Interviews, analysis, the biggest names in sports. If they're talking New York sports, they're talking to Mike and the Mad Dog. Tomorrow, starting at 1, only on Yes. Your neighbors are nice, huh? Chucky's mm -hmm. finally got a kid his age to play with. He seems to have fun playing over there. I don't like it, too. <laughs> It's nice being alone for a change. Mm -hmm. Ask your neighbor, is there a gun where your children play? On the next all-new What's It Worth, one record mantle didn't break. I have almost as much power left-handed as I do right-handed. Plus, a Duke fan's dream ball and the Donnie baseball action figure with batting glove grip on an all-new What's It Worth, premiering Friday night at 11, only on Yes. For everything... For everything Yankees, there's only one place to turn. The Yes Network. The Yes Network brings you over 130 games from the 26-time world champion Yankees. That's more than 130 chances to see every pitch, every hit, every thrilling moment of Yankees baseball. It's New York's premier sports franchise on New York's premier sports network. The New York Yankees on Yes. Play ball. Sponsored locally by Image 2000 Union. Jason Bourne has a past he can't remember. I don't know who I am. Visa? Yes. Skills he can't explain. You've got an agent on the run. Take him out. And a danger he can't escape. I want Bourne by sundown. Based on the international bestseller. This is not gonna stop. Matt Damon. Find it. Order The Bourne Identity, next on In Demand Pay-Per-View. 
starting every half hour on Comcast Digital Cable with a bonus alternate ending not shown in theaters. Welcome back to Continental Airlines Arena. Through our first period, Bergen Catholic, a commanding 3-0 lead over the Rams of Randolph. We talked about our individual matchup, Jason May versus Dan Pensinger. Well, the shift's about the same, the shot's about the same, but so far, May has more points with a goal and an assist. Jason May has played very well tonight. And we talk about the comparison between the two players. Mick, they are teammates on the Avalanche, the junior team. These two fellows, along with Anthony Randazzo, all play together and all coached by Danny May. So they're very familiar with each other's moves. And so far, Jason May has had the upper hand in that one-on-one -on -one matchup here tonight. In a very interesting first period. But we heard so much about the firepower of Bergen Catholic. Seton Hall Prep kind of took them out of their game a little bit in the parochial final. But still in all, they've come out flying here in through this first period. Now, we should take a look. We mentioned a very physical period, and Pensinger getting decked. Two guys jumping on him that time. Maybe you see him laying on the ice again. As I said, Mick, whether you have the puck or don't have the puck tonight, you have to keep your head up. Otherwise, you're going to be laying flat on the ice. All right, now let's go downstairs. Mary Beth standing by with the Randolph coach, Rich McLaughlin. Richie, your team's down 3-0. You're being outshot 2-1. to one. Are the defensemen going to join the rush? What changes are in store? We, we got to come back and start all over. We didn't come out that period. We were laid back too much. I don't know. We just weren't aggressive enough. We're going to hopefully come out and be a lot more aggressive this period. Though. Everybody, the whole team. And how are you going to try to contain their offense? We, again, we just have to play harder. We, we didn't come out. We sat back and watched a little bit. Let them come to us. We've got to take the game a little bit more to them and try to be more aggressive in all three zones. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you very much, Mary Beth. Pete Caggiano, can they get that done? It's going to be a tough task. If you remember right in the beginning, Richie McLaughlin said, I'm playing for all the public schools in the state of New Jersey. He knows the weight that's on his shoulders, and he also knows he comes into tonight's game as the underdog, but that doesn't mean you can't win the game. Well, we should tell you that Wednesday night on Yes, the Nets take on the Knicks at the Meadowlands. Complete coverage begins at 7 with Fred Hickman and the Nets pregame. Then join Ian Eagle and Kelly Trapuca for all the action starting at 7.30. For the NBA's best, it's nothing but Nets. Wednesday night starting at 7 only on Yes. So we are set for our second 15-minute period. Here comes Randolph. Outscoring their opponents 30 to 5 through the playoffs so far, but that man right there, Dan May of Bergen Catholic, has had the answer for that. Dan May and his whole team played a near perfect first period tonight. They have won it back in 2001. Right now they're riding the saves of Stephen Ritter. 19-1 and 2. His only loss of the year was to Hudson Catholic back on January the 10th. He's had five saves so far, and he hasn't lost a game since. And in that game that they lost against Hudson Catholic, they had over 50 shots on goal against Hudson Catholic, but couldn't win the game. Cal Finnerty, six shutouts this year, but now he's just got to work out save by save by save and get his team back in this game. He can't afford to give up anymore. Mick, if you can say a kid played well even though he gave up three goals, Carol Finnerty did that in the first period. He played well, he held his position well, made some nice saves, but you have to credit Bergen Catholic. They did a better job of the opportunities in front of them. The thing what really propelled Bergen Catholic was their skating offensively because they were able to break out and get some two-on-ones on a goalie that, you know, Fennerty really didn't have a chance on two of the three goals. They were just excellent offensive displays of power by Bergen Catholic. So we are set for our second period. Randazzo against Pensinger, and Randazzo wins the faceoff for Bergen Catholic. The top line out there with Grafito, who has two goals, and Lunau as they dump it into the Randolph men. Picked up by Pensinger, his breakout pass deflected. And it lays near the blue line, and finally picked up by the Crusaders, and they'll just dump it right back in, and we have a whistle. Plays offside. So Fennerty has a chance to see the defense step up here. Randazzo has played very well through this first period so far. He's the stepbrother of Jason May. 
Hockey in the family, Pete. Hockey in the family starts with the father all the way down the line. Face off controlled by Bergen Catholic and maybe got away with one there as Pensinger was going after a loose puck and got pulled down. They're going after Pensinger the whole night. As I said before, whether he has the puck or doesn't have the puck, that young fellow must keep his head up because he has a bullseye on his back. Finally, the puck picked up here by Sean Mahaffey. He will dump it in. Ritter leaves it along the wall. Jason May circles behind his own net and starts out here. Fanned on by Graffito. But he gets it back at the blue line. Takes a bump from Rossi. Got it ahead to Randazzo. Here comes Lunau across the line. At the top of the circle, he's ridden on. But picked up by Anthony Randazzo. Throws it right in front. And he had Bendazzi looking for a tip, but he couldn't complete the play. Kept in, though, by Luna. And Bendazian takes his man in the corner hard. Now picked up in a neutral zone, Ben O'Donnell. Steady defenseman, shoots it in. But well, we got a whistle. So play stops with 13-38. Christian Valvano, just a sophomore, played here last year as a freshman. One goal versus Brick the other night. Nine goals on the season. This kid is very good. He's not real big, he's not, he's only 16 years old. Wait till he matures. His brother had a four-year career at Randolph, did very well. I expect his younger brother to follow in his footsteps. You can't discount experience. He's already played in some big games, and like you say, he's just a sophomore. Three-nothing Bergen Catholic, just underway in period number two. We have a penalty on Tony Rossi. Two minutes for hooking. He goes to the sin bid at 1.22. So power play now for Bergen Catholic. Nick, this is a crucial kill. 4 nothing could be one of the nails in the coffin for... Oh, and there it is. Just from the point, the puck kind of flipped up and over the stick. The finity and into the net. Well, like you said, Pete, this could be a nail in the coffin. And that's a goal that you just don't want to give up. I know it's a power play opportunity. Well, that puck was bouncing, and you figured it didn't have a lot on it. I don't know if Finnerty ever saw it. He went down late, and the puck kind of skipped. Sort of in baseball, the puck on its edge, it takes a bad hop. There you're going to see it. Bodies in front, that's the difference. Joe Fredo screening in front. Kevin Snow was in front. Two guys screened Finnerty. He did not see the puck until it skipped past him. May shot went right between Snow and the offensive player. They're going to give it to Jafrida. He must have deflected off of him in front of the net. May picks up an assist, and Ben O'Donnell gets one as well. 132, the time of the goal, and Jafrido now has the hat trick. And play getting more physical now in the Bergen Catholic end. So Randolph trails 4-0. Sylvester winds the puck behind the net. Fay has it. Pinched in along the boards, and it finally comes out to Sylvester. Nick, you said pinched it along the boards, more like held along the boards. What Bergen Catholic is doing is not only are they making the check, they're holding on. Here comes a 3-on-1. Ben Dazzi on the left wing. Hits the trailer in a slot. Back in, and a big save. And looking over the shoulder was Spenity as he hangs on. Kyle had a guess. What am I going to do? Am I going to take the shooter? He's at a bad angle, or is he going to try to slide it in front? Watch the scoring chance on the one end. Backhand, great save. So Keo moments ago, we had the goal. Here it starts from the point. Shot, look at the screen in front. Did it hit? Well, they're crediting the goal to Joe Fredo. I'm not sure if it hit Joe Fredo or Kevin Snow, but many times they'll credit it to the closest offensive player. And for Kevin Snow, that is his... 30th goal of the season. 4 nothing. Bergen cap. And the hat trick for DeFredo in this game. And all BC so far. And they keep the pressure on in the Randolph end. Mahaffey winds it around to Rossi. Kept in by Luna. Gazzo tries to center the puck. Let go! And the man in front finally picked up here by Pensinger. And they get it ahead. Trying to spring Michael Lugus. Couldn't do it. Doug Lunau gives it up. Snow putting the pressure on. Wants to turn the corner. Wrap around. Threw it right in front. 
swept at by Hensinger. Didn't really get a lot on it. It's going to be set the rest of the length of the ice, and we have icing. 4 nothing. Bergen Catholic with 11.30 to go here in the middle period. Class of High School Hoops is on guest as the March of Champions presents the Tournament of Champions. First, Malcolm X Shabazz takes on Marlboro for the girls' title. Then, St. Patrick takes on Camden Catholic for the boys' championship. The New Jersey High School Basketball Championship, tomorrow starting at 6, only on Yes. You're losing your hair, and you haven't ordered Avacor yet? Hi, I'm Derek Cope, race car driver and TV analyst. To do your best, you need to look and feel your best. When I started noticing my hair thinning, I decided to take action. I explored various options, and I found the Avacor system. The experts at Avacor told me that hair loss is caused by a body chemical called DHT that stops your hair from growing. Avacor has an all-natural DHT blocker, and its topical physician's formulation starts your hair growing again. It worked for me. It's about confidence and the desire to win. Avacor does that. Join the tens of thousands of satisfied customers who have reversed their hair loss with Avacor. It's guaranteed. Call 800-390-1688. Now you can use Avacor risk-free for one full year. It's guaranteed. Call 800-390-1688. That's 800-390-1688. Dominating force in European soccer, Manchester United pursues another English Premier League title on Yes. Thursday at 9.30, the Red Devils take on Aston Villa. Then get the latest with Red Hot News plus Man U versus Fulham. Thursday on Yes. Well, well you know, want to know what it's like to be a goal scorer? Take a look at John Jofredo here tonight as he has three of the four goals. Well, Jofredo with three goals so far, but I'll tell you what. Steven Ritter has done his job holding things at the other end. But you mentioned the three goals by Jofredo. He's had it working through the first half of this game. The first one's a drop pass from Randazzo, and he beats him up over the corner. Next, a little ditchy doodle move to beat Finnerty. And then watch the shot. Comes from the center of the ice. Does he tip it in? I'm not sure. It hits somebody in front, but they award the goal to him. Three on the evening. He reached back with the stick maybe got a piece of it. Oh, he made an attempt, and like all offensive players do, you jump in the air, and many times the guy who jumps in the air the highest, that's who they give the goal to. 4-0 Bergen Catholic. Jason May, the other scorer. Pressure kept on here in the Bergen Catholic end, but no clean shots. Notice you got two defensemen staying right there in the box. The Bergen Catholic defensemen, as well as the wingers coming back to play defense, are doing an excellent job. And Dazzy getting off the play here by Zimmers and putting out the glove to stop play as Kyle Fennerty. Brett Mendazian, good size for the winger at six feet, 195, and any goalie seeing him come in has got to be wary. Rich McLaughlin, wonder what he's going to say to his troops now. And you just mentioned Mendazian, seven goals on the season, 17 points. One of those players that can use the physical body. Six foot, 195, likes to take the body as much as he can. And the assist against Seton Hall Prep in the parochial championship. This puck is shot the length of the ice. Ritter will leave it behind his own net. And to get it back into the neutral zone. And here comes Jafrito, who already has three goals. Throws it in front. Nice job defensively by Tony Rossi to slide and take the pass away. Intended for Randazzo. Nick, great job by Tony Rossi to make that play. He gave up his body with the stick extended, the legs behind him got just enough of it. Nice and called as 4-0 Bergen Catholic, and Dan Pensinger hasn't been able to get on track here tonight. Well, you have to credit Dan May. What he's doing, he's putting his son Jason May on the ice every time. Being the home team, they get the last change. Bergen Catholic gets to put their players out after Randolph puts their players out. And whenever you see number nine in the blue, you'll see number four in the white. Matchup has worked to perfection for Bergen Catholic. May with a shot, that was tipped, and it just caught the goal stick of penalty. Otherwise, that's going in the net. I don't think he saw that one tipped either. Tough time for a goaltender. There's redirections right in front. That time, the puck just happened to hit him. Sometimes you have to be a little lucky to be good. Behind the net. Bergen Catholic comes up with a loose puck again. Breakout pass from Mendazzo takes it off the boards. Now it's picked up by May. He'll lead the charge. 
looking for someone in front. Jason May will circle, try to set up a man in the slot, but only one defenseman back with May on the rush, and now here comes Pensinger. He's hooked as he tries to get the pass away, but broken up, and it comes back to the neutral zone. That was May catching up to Pensinger. That was the matchup that they wanted. That's what Dan May wanted. Whenever Pensinger is on the ice, he wants his son Dan May out there. Excuse me, Jason May, and they got the matchup, and it worked to perfection. Body's still flying, but now here comes Ben O'Donnell. O'Donnell rolls it ahead for Matt Rutsch. In the neutral zone, Bergen Catholic gets the puck back. They'll dump it in. This plays offside. Physical play all around. Whether you have the puck or don't have that puck, watch this, a boom, little bit of an elbow there, got away with it. Mahaffey putting the forearm into the side of the face of the Bergen Catholic player. Passenger taking a well-needed rest. He's being hounded and pounded the whole night. Now that top line of Lou, Snow, and Pensinger just not getting on track. Face off here by Cara Kappa. Couldn't win it. Bergen Catholic looks to come out. Matt Rutsch comes across the line in the left wing. Try to roll it back to the point. Intercepted. And it comes back the other way. Cara Kappa plays forward. Now digs it out along the boards. He's just a little guy at 5'10". Sunudis winds it around. Takes it to the far corner. O'Brien trying to dig the puck out for the Crusaders and does. Stopped at the point. Beats with a shot. Big glove save by Ritter. Maybe his toughest save so far. We have a timeout. 4 nothing. Bergen Catholic. Ready to take control of your credit card debt? Credit Guard of America cut my monthly payments in half. Credit Guard of America is a nonprofit service that's helped thousands of people to move on with their lives. Credit Guard of America saved me over $13,000 in interest fees alone. Call now to reduce your monthly payments. Cut the interest rates on your credit cards by up to half and get your unsecured debt paid off years earlier. Don't you owe it to yourself to work with a real nonprofit service? Certified counselors are standing by. Call 1-800-543-0409. Well, welcome back, and we've talked about May and Pensinger going head-to-head. -head. That matchup has been fierce. Both players doing everything they can do. Now watch the speed of May as he catches up to Pensinger. Doesn't quite get all of them, but enough to reach out with the stick, enough to hook him. He's still icing that arm. He's bruised the other night in the game against Seton Hall Prep. Kind of thing where if you hit a nerve, you lose the feeling, you lose the, the effectiveness of the arm. But you knew he was not going to be out of tonight's game. He was going to play any way, any, any possible way he can play tonight, he was going to do here. 8.40 on the clock, moving in period number two. Bergen Catholic with a 4 nothing lead. Another collision right in the neutral zone. And Dazzing kind of got the worst of that. Here's a shot by uh, Sylvester. It goes wide. Faye follows it up. Is he saved for Ritter? He deflects it to the corner. Now back to the point. Becker could not keep it in. And Mick, those are cardinal sins. You have the puck in his zone, you have him control, and the defenseman takes his eye off the puck and allows it to roll just over the blue line. You must keep that puck in the zone. Jason well, May taken advantage of a little earlier in the semifinals, or should say the parochial finals the other night. He gets pounded left and right by Seton Hall Prep. And that's why he has that sore arm this evening. Take a look at some of that action. This is the other night. Big hit there, boom. Not only does he get hit, but then he takes the impact into the sideboard. You see that? That's when his right shoulder and his right arm crashed into the wall. That's what's giving him the problem. Well, here's his shot, which whistles wide from the point. Kept in though nicely by his wingers, and here is Cifrito, who rolls it in and now covers up. It took a swipe at the goalie, even after Fennerty had his hand on the, on the puck. Gifredo smelled number four, was right in front of him, but the puck was hopping. It was bouncing, and when he swept with the stick, he went right underneath it. Now we saw Pensinger with four the other night in the, in the public championship game, and now Gifredo looking for his fourth in the Tournament of Champions final. And that guy right there, Finnerty, seeing a lot of rubber tonight. To the point, here's a shot that whistles up and over the net. Stays in play, however. But the breakout pass just not there for Randolph as they still trail 4 0. And that shot wouldn't have counted if it had gone in. Correct, Nick. That was offsides. Steven Ritter 
having a pretty much an easy night. Only nine shots on goal, many of them from 40, 50 feet out. Pensinger really taking a pounding. Every time he has the puck and every time he's trying to beat that man right there, Stephen Ritter, he's been denied. On the faceoff, Pensinger rolls it to the corner. Snow was tripped, fans wanted a penalty, but none called. Snow in the corner, looking for Pensinger in front. It's picked up, though, by O'Donnell, who gets it back to the point. Now tipped in front by Snow. He's going to try to get the rebound himself. Couldn't do it. Puck took a funny bounce, and Pensinger's shot whistles wide, and it comes off the backboard and almost centered itself. Nick, we saw that the other night. This is a pro rink. This is a professional building. Those boards are very lively, especially behind the net. One of the better scoring opportunities in this game so far for Randolph. Pensinger gets it to the point. Here's a shot. Stop. Rebound. By, and Pensinger has it stoned right there by Ritter. Nick, on that shot, Kevin Snow redirected it at the last second. He was in real tight, just about at the top of the crease. Good save by Ritter. May. Throws it back in his own zone. And now they try to spring Anthony Randazzo. Throws the backhander in front. Going to be picked up, though, by Dietz, who will get it out of the zone. He knew he had Jason May cruising down the slot. That pass just missed. Now May on the forehand. That's the pass intercepted in the neutral zone. Lairhoff shoots it wide. Rossi going to keep it in? No. Tried to play the man. May got there first and got it out. Randolph has put a few more shots on the cage now. But Nick, most of them are coming from far away and they're coming not at the right time. They're, they're dumping type shots, they're shots from the blue line, just trying to put the puck on net. Not the real good scoring opportunities that they need. 6.04 to go here in the middle period. Here comes Cameron Dietz. But they put a body on him right away. And it's back in the Randolph end. 4 0 Bergen Catholic in period number two. Michael O'Brien in the neutral zone. His bodies were all over that puck on the far wall. Valley Randolph going to control as it is Dietz. But he's hit and it's dumped right back in by Zanudis. Nick, it's the physical play by Bergen Catholic that's forcing the Randolph players to pick their head up, either overskating the puck or giving it away. And who's Johnny on the spot to pick it up? Another Bergen Catholic player. Now Zanudis has his pass intercepted. Here comes Dietz. Written off nicely by Zanudis. Defenseman covering up mistakes for Bergen Catholic. Now here comes Brett Vendazian. Takes a drive well wide. The puck almost rebounds all the way out of the zone. It is out now. Here comes Kevin Snow. He's with Pensinger. Tries to get the puck to Pensinger, who sidesteps a check, picks it up, has it on his backhand. Snow is going to help him out. Snow in the corner. Trying to get it to Michael Wu in front. But broken up, and it's coming back the other way. Casey Giblin. One on two. Giblin doing it all by himself. Looking for the trailer. Threw it in front. And it's deflected wide. 4.36 on the clock moving. Now Wu now. Trapped along the boards. Randazzo almost picked up a loose puck. There's a turnover in front for Frito. Shot scores! Fourth of the game! John Jafrito gets his fourth of this championship final. It's 5-0 Bergen Catholic. And none more prettier than that. Again, it's a turnover. It's a giveaway by Randolph right in front of their net. But credit John Jafredo for a beautiful move right at the end. Watch, there's the giveaway. The pass right on the tape. Forehand, backhand, just like one of his earlier goals tonight. And he's happy. He scores number four. There, You saw him flick the stick there a little bit. That was faking the forehand. Had enough time to pull it to the backhand because there was no Randall player around him. And then was able to tuck it by Kyle Finnerty. His fourth of the evening. Five nothing. Bergen Capital. He has four goals on five shots. And he's still on for the shift. That's efficiency. 10.36, the time of the goal. And the puck still in the zone for Bergen Catholic. In the slot, shot saved by Fennerty. Off the stick right there. Rendazzo was bidden for a goal. Finally, Randolph picks it up, and they'll get it out with Alex Fay. Fay in a three-on-two. Hits the trailer. Saved, ooh, and a rebound. Not controlled by Ritter, and it just goes wide. You saw that the other, the other night, Nick. Ritter gives up rebounds. That time he laid the puck right in the middle of the ice. Back the other way, shot, score! Doug Lunau! Oh, Lunau 
score the game winner against Seton Hall Prep in the parochial championship game, and he tacks on one here in the TOC final. Nick, not only that, it was an identical play. Out racing the defenseman, lunging, diving, getting a one-time shot off as the pass comes from deep in center ice. 100-foot pass comes from way back his own defensive zone. He's going to outskate Dana Becker, lunging, diving, shoots the puck, beats Kyle Finnerty, and looked just like Thursday night. Same type goal, same type shot, and same result in the net. That top line has just been awesome. And smiles all around. Six nothing. Bergen Catholic over Randolph with 3.40 to go here in our second period. They've broken open. Stay with us. For the NBA's best, it's nothing but Nets. Wednesday, Kenny and Martin and the Nets look to get the Knicks in a twist and drive New York back across the Hudson. Join Fred Hickman for complete pregame coverage Wednesday starting at 7, part of the March of Champions, only on Yes. Experience the drama, excitement, and energy of New Jersey Nets basketball all season long. Call 1-800-7NJ-NET or reserve your 2003-2004 season ticket plan today. Well, welcome back as Kyle Fennerty has seen his day come to a premature end. Mick, he's only a junior, though. He'll be back next year. And there's the guy taking his place, the senior, Matt Schultz. Three wins, two losses this year. Goals against average of 2.0. Save percentage of 8.39. And nice move by Rich McLaughlin to get the senior into this game. Although, as you get a new goalie here, you do have one piece of bad news is Jason May, with a big lead, now has decided to maybe get some medical attention on that bruised arm, playing possibly his last high school game. Well, that was trainer Joe walking him out, and 6 nothing lead still in the second period. You have to be confident right now, but you want to err on the side of caution. No need for him to come and play this game anymore. He's done his job. Let's rest that arm for another night. So Matt Schultz in net for Randolph as they trail 6-0. Back to the point. Play broken up by Ian O'Connell. Sent back into the neutral zone. Cut right back in. 3.19 to go in our middle period. All Bergen Catholic here tonight. This buck iced and will come back the other way. Now let's see if we can pick up the injury to Jason May possibly getting his last shift. Watch as he goes right to the left of your screen and gets hit. But watch when he comes down again on that right arm, hitting the elbow first. And yes, they do wear elbow pads, but I have to tell you, the impact is there. It jars all the way up into the shoulder. And this is a kid who already has an injury. Maybe for the first time that wouldn't hurt, but when you're nursing a sore arm to begin with, that's just icing on the cake. That's a good move by a coach and a father. You got your son injured up by six nothing. Trying to get him a little rest. Three minutes to play in the middle period. Brett Fantasian threw it right in front. They had a man cruising there in Keo, just missed. Fantasian throws it in the slot again. Knocked down at the point, sent right back in, and the tip goes wide. Another great chance by Bergen Catholic. Shot from the point, redirected from about 15 feet out, just missed the cage. Six love. Bergen Catholic. Fantasian still in the lumber. Knocks his man down behind the net. Along the boards, finally picked up here by Cara Capo. Winds it around. But Randolph can't get out of its own zone. Well, Mick with a 6-0 lead. The defenseman for Bergen Catholic can afford to pinch in. Well, Bergen Catholic striking fast in the opening period, and they have kept the pressure on throughout the game. Well, if he turned your eye away for a second, you were going to miss some real good scoring plays. There's one right there by John Gifredo. And then out racing, shooting. There's the goal. Doug Lunau. scoring just as he did the other night. They keep the pressure on. Two goals in 44 seconds. 
Doesn't give you much time to uh, get a breather. If you're on the fence with Randolph. They're coming at you in waves. And Rich McLaughlin was afraid of this. He knew Bergen Catholic had the power. Everybody knew Bergen Catholic had the power. He was just trying to keep him under wraps long enough that maybe he could pull out a miracle. But it looks awful slim right now. Here comes a three-on-two back the other way. Penson slips and falls near the blue line. Things just not going right tonight for the Rams of Randolph. Nick, it took a long time for Dan to get up. He must be tired as well, as he's logged a lot of time on the ice this evening. Plus, he's taken a lot of hits. Back to the point, shot, and here's a save by Matt Schultz. Schultz is a senior, was three and two this year. Hensinger takes a shot, that whistles wide. Michael Liu gives chase. This puck will be shot the length of the ice, and ice against Bergen Catholic. 119 to go in the second period, Bergen Catholic with a six to nothing lead. Well, Dan Pensinger gonna be disappointed, but we'll hear his thoughts when he talks to Mary Beth at the end of the period. Watch this as he comes over the line, just falls on his own, nobody hits him, sort of tripped over the blue line. And then watch how long it takes him to get up. You saw his head cocked to the left there a little bit. That's just the frustration and disgust knowing that they're on the short side of a 6-0 score. You hate to be playing your last high school game and seeing it slip away like that. 6-0, Bergen Catholic of Randolph. 103 to go in the middle period. This is the last minute to play. Prezioso gets the puck ahead here for Matt Rutch. Rutch working in the corner. Now Ian O'Connell. Notice the third line members getting a lot more ice time now. There's a good hit. Boy, that was Valvano. Valvano using every bit of his small frame, throwing not only his body, but his forearm and shoulder into that check. At the blue line, Faye tries to get it ahead. 33 yeah, seconds yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. Valvano just swipes it into the Bergen Catholic end. Almost shot all the way out of the zone by Ritter. Now here is Sean Sylvester. Works behind the net, try to throw it in front. Bay on a backhander, that's intercepted. Long pass ahead by O'Connell. Eight seconds to go in the period. Tony Rossi in his own end. Has it broken up. And the horn will sound with Bergen Catholic leading by a commanding 6-0 score over Randolph through two periods, Pete. Bergen Catholic showing tremendous offensive display. 20 to 13 shots. They're peppering the goaltenders for Randolph. Just by the book, exactly what they wanted. Well, Thursday afternoon on Yes, the division champion, New York Yankees welcome the Toronto Blue Jays for a preview of their season opening series. Complete coverage begins at one as Michael Kay and Ken Singleton call all the action from Legends Field. Blue Jays versus the Yankees, Thursday afternoon starting at one, only on Yes. Let's go downstairs to Mary Beth standing by with Dan Pensinger. Dan, guys, offense has started to pick up a little bit. Your shots on goal have improved. But is the team just getting sloppy in its own in its own zone? We're just not playing the defense we were taught to play. Um, we're just running around, throwing pucks everywhere, and their offense is too fast for us to make mistakes and they'll tally every time. And, it, and it, why don't we take a look at the monitor here? Um, let's talk about this next series here. The shift. Yeah, just, we're just trying to throw everything at net and crash the net. Uh, I don't know, we're just trying to get something going. So it seems that they've really st started to get you covered all around. Do you feel the pressure? Yeah, definitely. I got hit a couple times pretty hard in that first and second period, so just try to fight through it and uh, do my best. Well, thanks, Dan, and have a happy birthday. Hey, you, uh, you too. Okay. So at the end of two periods, Bergen Catholic leads six to nothing. We'll be back. Car of the Year. Brilliantly equipped for 31195.
Welcome back to Continental Airlines Arena, our second intermission. Bergen Catholic all over the Randolph Rams in this Tournament of Champions final by a score of six to nothing. Chance to take a look at our scoring summary. All Bergen Catholic in the second period. John Jafrido from Jason May and Ben O'Donnell on a power play in one minute at 132. And then Jafrido gets his fourth of the game from Randazzo and Lunau at 1036. And then Doug Lunau in a long breakout pass. Jafrido with his fifth point of the game gets the assist, and Ben O'Donnell helped out as well. Bergen Catholic with a 6-0 advantage. Pete, we heard that Bergen Catholic was the number one team in the state of New Jersey. I didn't think they were this good. Well, if anybody saw them this year, they would tell you they are this good, Mick. Tremendous team, good balance, back and forth from the goaltender to the defense to the forwards. Just an outstanding team, an outstanding coach. And the other thing, too, is they have taken the body so well. We mentioned that in the first period, but even with a six-goal lead, well, they're not slacking off. No, they're coming hard. They're continuing to pressure the goaltenders for Randolph. They like playing in this building. They played the other night, played a great game. They're playing here again tonight. This is highlight films for them. Well, we talked about one of the big matchups, Jason May and Dan Pensinger, and so far, Jason May, even though he's been injured, has had the upper hand, undoubtedly. Well, Jason May might be done for the night. He's nursing that sore arm that took him off, but this is his goal, the big booming slap shot from the point on a Randolph turnover, and that time, that was the second goal of the evening for Bergen Catholic, but it didn't stop there. Bergen Catholic kept coming. Read the front, direction in front, Another goal by Bergen Catholic as they continue to put the pressure on. And Pensinger really hasn't had a chance to get started. There's been three white shirts on him every time he touches the puck. Nick, he's been pounded and pounded the whole night. He has been laying on the ice prone many times. Take a look at the numbers. Jason May and the shifts about even. Pensinger actually with more shots. The scoring chances are the same, but May with three points. And unfortunately, though, it looks like his game has already come to an end because with that arm injury, he has gone to the dressing room with a 6-0 lead. It's kind of doubtful that he might return. Well, you know, we've talked about Jason May becoming a Jersey guy as he's putting his name in the record books. Bergen Catholic on their way to another Tournament of Champions title. But uh, the man who is really a Jersey guy as a tournament director, and that's Paul McGinnis. You can call him the godfather of hockey in New Jersey. Directed his state tournament and then back in 98 had the opportunity to actually referee a National Hockey League game. Well, that happened when the referees went on strike, so to speak, because they didn't like the way Koharski was treated by the Devils coach back then. And when Paul McGinnis took over that game, a good protege of his, Patty DePuzo, who's the assistant coach for Bergen Catholic, kind of didn't see eye to eye. Patty, a company man, was not real happy. But just like Yogi and George, they've made up now. They're buddies again, and that's good news for hockey in New Jersey. Well, time heals all wounds as uh, you know, those bad feelings get put by the wayside. Great to see both people back here in the building for this Tournament of Champions final. Once again, it's 6-0. We're in our second intermission. Bergen Catholic, Oliver Randolph, and we'll come back with more in a moment on the Yes Network here tonight. Yankees baseball is back on Yes as the Yankees aim to hit their mark and shoot down the high-flying Blue Jays. Join Michael Kay and Ken Singleton for complete game coverage starting Thursday at 1, part of the March of Champions, only on Yes. The Yes Network kicks off the second century of Yankees baseball with Yankees 2003. Get a preview of the season ahead, catch up on your favorite players, and get to know the newest Bronx Bombers. Yankees 2003, today at noon, only on Yes. Welcome back. Our second intermission here at Continental Airlines Arena, the Tournament of Champions final in New Jersey. Bergen Catholic ahead of the Randolph Rams by a score of six to nothing. Wednesday night on Yes. The Nets take on the Knicks at the Meadowlands. Complete coverage begins at seven with Fred Hickman and the Nets pregame. Then join Ian Eagle and Kelly Trapuka for all the action starting at 7.30. For the NBA's best, it's nothing but Nets. Wednesday night starting at seven, only on Yes. Let's go downstairs. Mary Beth is standing by with Dan May. Coach, you're 15 minutes away from becoming the overall state champion. Has everything gone according to plan so far? Yeah, the kids are playing a very good game, playing hard. It was a tough turnaround, you know, just two days after winning a parochial title, but uh, very proud of the kids are playing hard. And what's it like to coach both your son and your stepson? Uh, I'm glad this is the last period of it. It's been a lot of fun, but, you know, it's time for them to move on and play for someone else. And we saw that Jason was getting some medical assistance. How is he doing? I think he's got a pretty pretty badly sprained wrist, but he's going to come out and see what he can do in the third. All right, 
Thanks so much, Coach. Best of luck. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Mary Beth. And we look forward to seeing Jason on the ice in period number three. Mick, you can't keep him off the ice. He wants to play more and more in this building. Well, second period, very productive for Bergen Catholic as they scored three times. John Gifredo on the deflection gets the hat trick. That's number three of his four this evening. And then again, just good pressure all around. There's the backhand. Another one for Gifredo. That's number three. And then Lunau. Similar to what he did the other night against Seton Hall Prep, taking the pass from deep inside his zone, lunging, diving, putting the puck in. Well, let's break down the shots on goal for you, and you'll see that you know, this game has been all Crusaders. They've kind of been cruising along. Bergen Catholic with 20 shots, Randazzo with five, Jafrito four goals on just five shots. Talk about the economy. He is doing it right there. Randolph, on the other hand, well, They've struggled a little bit. 13 shots on goal. Pensinger with three. He's been slowed down. Snow with three as well, and Rossi two from the point. Pensinger's three shots, nothing really to speak of. None of them are real good scoring opportunities. Credit Bergen Catholic's defense for bottling him up. And a change in goal. You're going to get Andy O'Connor for the Crusaders here, the junior, in period number three. He has allowed six goals this season. His save percentage is 86.36. He's a six foot, 180 pound junior. Great opportunity for Andy O'Connell getting into tonight's game. Here you see the second goaltender for Randolph as well, Matt Schultz, getting some time in tonight. Schultz, three and two this year. Goals against average of 2.0 and a save percentage of 8.39 with two shutouts. Last minute instructions. From Dan May, his fifth year as a head coach, looking for his second overall Tournament of Champions final. Mick, did you hear what he said when he was down in the interview? Maybe it's time for my son and my stepson to move along. It's so tough when you have to coach your own son. As you talked the other night, sometimes it's tough to leave the game at the rink. You bring it home with you. He's probably the guy that's driving you back and forth from home to the game. And, some, and sometimes as a, uh, a father, maybe driving you crazy if you're a son too, right? <laughs> or it could be the other way. It could be the son driving the father crazy. Yeah, possibly. Because now there's two on one. So warm-up time for Andy O'Connor. On the other side, been a he's storybook smiling. ride for Rich McLaughlin. Yeah, he's, he's finally won that public championship, first time in school history. And regardless of this game, you can't take away the public school championship from the Randolph Rams this year. Well, no sense crying, Mick. You made it to the to the to the pinnacle of the game. You made it to tonight's game. He's happy. Is he losing? Yeah, he's losing real bad. But you know what? He's smiling. He's happy he's here. He's here. He's happy his team's here. And he's proud of what his team has done this year. Oh, where well, where else would you rather be? I mean, you're in the Tournament of Champions final at the Meadowlands. It doesn't get much better than that. Mick, there's 118 high schools that have ice hockey in New Jersey. There's only two on the ice tonight. He's, his team is one of them. It shows you the commitment and how well his team is so prepared throughout the year. And, of course, Dan May, his team looking for its 21st win, 14-0-1 in their last 15, soon to make it 15-0-1. So we are set for period number three, 6-0, Bergen Catholic over the Randolph Rams. And we are underway in the third. Going to get this one ahead to Doug Luna, who will keep it on its way. Behind the net, picked up by Mahaffey. Tries to clear out, can be kept in at the point by David Adams. In on goal, and there's a save for Schultz. And Schultz is senior. Nice to see him getting some playing time here at the Meadowlands. Bergen Catholic going to dump this in. Wound around the boards and picked up on the far side by Michael Wu, who gets it ahead. Here comes Dan Pensinger, trying to get his team on the board. Takes a shot, knocked down defensively, and a shot in front goes wide. Now picked up by Ben O'Donnell. O'Donnell, a very steady defenseman. Takes a return pass and gets it ahead to Jason May, so he's giving it a go with that banged up arm. But we have icing called. They're still nursing the right arm of Jason. You see him flexing it right there. You saw him wiggle the glove up and down. One goal, two assists tonight. 
He'll probably take shorter shifts tonight, not as many shifts here in the third period. Well, they always say the great ones can play through the pain. He's doing it. Of course, I'm sure his father wants to rest him a little bit. Hey, but my last game, Dad, he's going to talk him out of it, right? He'll do his best to get as much ice time as he can tonight. The same token, he's not going to jeopardize his future. You see the wince, though, as he goes to the bench. Faceoff is controlled here by Alex Fay. Randolph trying to keep the pressure on, but it comes out. Here is Keogh, gets it ahead, and the return pass takes a shot. Another save by Schultz. Schultz doing a fine job here in the third period. Made a few key saves. At the end of the second period, he made a few key saves. Since he's come in, he's done an excellent job for Randolph. Behind the net. Over skating. Quick dump around the corner, and it's in. The score by Sean Sylvester as he beats Andy O'Connor. First goal of the game for Randolph. It's now 6-1. to one. And for Sylvester, his eighth goal of the season. And the fans in blue get something to cheer about. The sophomore scores and breaks the shutout. Sean Sylvester catches O'Connor napping a little bit as he goes with the wraparound. O'Connor doesn't quite get to his left quick enough. The big long reach of the sophomore Sylvester tucks the puck home by O'Connor, his eighth of the season. So Randolph gets on the board as Sylvester gets the wraparound. Here comes Faye back the other way. They try to throw it in front to Valbano. 125 the time of the goal, but it was unassisted by a Sylvester. Breaks the shutout. Now Faye behind the net. Gets the puck to Valvano. Valvano back to Faye on his backhand, looking to throw it in front. Swept away by O'Donnell, and here comes that top line. Doug Luna on the wing, comes across. Nobody in front of him. He could wind up, takes the shot, and a nice save right there by Schultz. Good save by Schultz, but we saw from our angle up here, Mick, he had a little bit of an opening on the short side. Schultz was able to move quickly with the left elbow, makes the save. Randazzo shoots it wide off the backhand. Good pressure by Luna to keep it in. Digs on the far boards with Valvano, and it goes ahead. Sylvester, who has the goal, gets a piece of the puck, but it's sent right back in, and icing called. It's coming back the other way for Randolph. Well, some life supplied by that man right there, Sean Sylvester. Absolutely nice shot. Watch how these guys play this puck. Notice the curl and drag. See that? He looks like he's going to go one way, pulls it back into his skates, then comes back up the other side and gets a quick shot off. That's skill, that's technique. And we've heard Anthony Randazzo is one of the most skilled players in the state of New Jersey. He's proving it here today. Bergen Catholic with a six to one lead over Randolph. Randolph trying to keep the pressure on and they'll just dump it right back in the near corner. Good hustle. Now finally picked up by Chris Prezioso as he takes it to center. Winds up from the blue line, just dumps it in the corner. Here comes Matt Rutsch. Rutsch ridden off the play, though, by Tony Rossi. Rossi, pretty good defenseman for Randolph. Slips and falls, though, as he tries to get it out. Here's Mahaffey. Mahaffey plays forward for Lerhoff. Broken up by Ian O'Connell and sent right back in. Mahaffey will pick up this loose puck in the near corner. 11.46. On the clock, there's a turnover. Randazzo drop pass. Cofrito takes the shot, hitting for his fifth, and it just went high and wide. Randazzo had an excellent opportunity, but unselfishly, he dropped the puck for John Fredo, trying to get him his fifth. Well, why not? Set some state records en route to the uh, championship, shall we? Randolph finally gets the puck, taking the pressure off. They'll shoot up the length of the ice, and we have icing. A timeout with 11.16 to go. Sylvester getting his team on the scoreboard. 6-1 though, Bergen Catholic over Randolph. The New York Times. I like to think of this as a gift I give myself and my family every single day. Sure, you could say it's just a newspaper. And I suppose the Grand Canyon's just a hole in the ground. Call now and get the New York Times delivered to your home every day for 50% off the regular home delivery price. The New York Times brings the world into our house every day. It's not just that they cover the news so well. It's the way they surround a story, giving me so many different ways to understand what's going on. 
need to understand what's affecting our investments. And what's happening on the web. Call now for eight weeks of the New York Times, including the amazing Sunday Times featuring arts and leisure, Sunday styles, and the magazine, all for 50% off. The world's moving pretty fast out there. This definitely helps. Call 1-800-562-7979 now and get the Times delivered to your home every day. I'd like to start getting home delivery of the New York Times. Open the cover on another season of Yankees Magazine on Yes. It's everything Yankees, including an inside look at what it's like to be a Bronx Bomber. Not only being a champion, but being a champion on a team so rich in tradition and history as the Yankees made it even more special. Plus, insight from coaches, cover stories, quick looks, and spotlights. Every moment's a big moment for me. For cover-to-cover -cover coverage of the 26-time world champion Yankees, watch Yankees Magazine, only on Yes. Exclusively from the home of champions, it's Yankeeography, the Yes Network signature series that brings you true stories of true legends. Whatever Yogi wanted to do, Yogi could do. It's the names you remember. Mantle had gifts from God, literally. From the games you won't ever forget. Jeter backhand. Got him! Go inside the pinstripes with Yankeeography, only on Yes, the home of champions. John Gerfredo, the sophomore. Mick, you think he's going to want to tape of tonight's game? This is probably going on the mantelpiece to show his kids and his kids' kids. Four goals, one assist tonight. Just a tremendous, dis tremendous display of offensive power. Yeah, but probably the most impressive thing you said there, Pete, was just the sophomore. Yes. He's still got two more years to play. He's putting on a quite a show. That's scary for the other teams in the state. Oh, absolutely. Land on the number one line with the likes of Lunau and Randazzo, but Lunau's a junior, so two thirds of that line coming back for next season. Saved there by O'Connor. He directs it to the near board. We've seen goaltending changes in this six nothing game. Here's a follow up shot, score. The rebound got away from O'Connell, and depositing the puck in the net is Kevin Snow. Snow gets his 30th goal of the year, and it's now a 6 2 game. Well, you can't give up rebounds, especially not with a guy like Kevin Snow on the doorstep. Kevin Snow doing what all goal scorers do. They go to the net. Shot taken from the point, kind of redirected. Saved by O'Connor, but he leaves the rebound right in front. Snow cruising in, tucks the puck with his backhand. Watch as he puts it right between the legs of Andy O'Connor and cuts the deficit to four. 6-2 now is... Now we go. Bergen Catholic going to make a goaltending change. They've seen enough as Steven Ritter comes back in. You think they're nervous, Mick? Uh, not nervous, but we gave an opportunity to O'Connor, and we're going back with number one now. <laughs> That's exactly so. 10.30 on the clock. And here comes Pensinger. A drop pass. Couldn't complete it, though. Tried to get it to Snow back at the top of the slot. Shot from the point. Knocked down defensively. And a two-on-two -two back the other way. And watch. Anthony Rendazzo turns on the Jets. Now holds up. Didn't have the numbers really in his favor that much. And gets intercepted and sent back to center. Luna knocks down the loose puck. Ridden off the play nicely. Christian Valvano. Gets it ahead here to Sylvester, who has one of the goals for Randolph. Across the line, puts on the brakes, looking for someone at the point, gets it back to Becker, throw it in front. Oh, right to the screen, and just went wide. Valvano had an excellent opportunity. He was about 15 feet out, right in the slot. Missed the puck with his stick, though. On the far wing, here comes a shot. Saved by Schultz, and he holds on. Keogh is right on the doorstep. And what a save by Schultz. Schultz had to be good on that one. Great opportunity. Jason May getting off, coming through the zone. And then his step, his half-brother, Randazzo, got the great shot off. After that last goal, Andy O'Connor back on the bench. Steven Ritter back on the ice. Bergen Catholic taking no chances. So O'Connor, the junior, got a chance to play here in the championship game. And you come off the bench sometimes, you're just not as sharp. 6-2 our score, and here comes Kevin Snow as the last goal for Randolph. Side steps to check. Ritter gets it out of harm's way. But Snow right there to the far wing, going wing to wing to keep the puck in the zone. Snow's not giving up. Takes a hit, 
keeps it going. And now here is Rossi shot. Score! that shot from the point. That's the goaltender's nightmare when a puck changes direction. They have to react almost instantly as soon as the puck leaves the stick. And as it was coming in, it changed course. Take a look at it. Good work on the side by Kevin Snow. Pass Petrie. You see it there, redirect from about 15 feet out. And Michael Lou, the senior, scores his 12th of the season. Watch right there, just with the stick with one hand, just gets enough for the puck to change direction, and now 6-3 the score. Hensinger will get one assist, I'm sure Ross the other, Michael Lou the goal. Lou gets his 12th of the year. Actually, they're gonna give an assist to Snow on the play. 8.53 as the clock is moving, and a 6-3 score as we have a timeout. So Randolph climbing back in the game. We're not done yet. There'll be a power play when we come back. Stay with us. Weekday afternoons, get the inside line with Mike and the Mad Dog on Yes. Interviews, analysis, the biggest names in sports. If they're talking New York sports, they're talking to Mike and the Mad Dog. Today, starting at 1, only on Yes. Attention all smokers. Now you can kick the habit in just seven days. That's right, you can quit smoking easily in only seven days guaranteed. Introducing the all-natural Smoke Away System, the herbal stop smoking program that works to help completely stamp out your nicotine cravings in just one week. Fed up with expensive patches, prescriptions, and gums that often don't work? For less than the price of all of them, you can stop smoking in seven days, 100% guaranteed, or your money back. It's safe. It's highly effective. I've had tremendous success with my patients using the Smoke Away program. I like the fact that Smoke Away is all natural, and it really works. I did Smoke Away for three days, and I've been smoke-free ever since. The secret is the unique combination of all natural herbal ingredients that work to completely and naturally eliminate your body's craving for nicotine. Why spend hundreds of dollars on patches and gums that just put more nicotine in your system? For less than the price of any of them, you will stop smoking in seven days, guaranteed, or your money back. Pick up the phone and order your Smoke Away system now. Smoke Away makes a great gift. On the next all-new What's It Worth, one record mantle didn't break. I have almost as much power left-handed as I do right-handed. Plus, a Duke fan's dream ball and the Donnie Baseball action figure with batting glove grip on an all-new What's It Worth, premiering Friday night at 11, only on Yes. Well, welcome back as you see Rich McLaughlin not done coaching yet. The 10-year veteran sees his team back in the game. Three goals in the last five minutes and 47 seconds. Wow, just what he needed here in the third period. I'm sure in between periods, because he actually chuckled after the first goal was scored by Randolph. He didn't want to get shut out. That was the goal. Now, all of a sudden, it's 6-3. Heck, he's back in the game. Yeah, but he's still down three, and he knows that. See, now he's more intense. When it was 6 nothing, he was a little more jovial because he figured he was out of it. Now it's 6-3. Uh-oh, I got to turn it back on. Well, Dan May coaching again as well. We've seen Andy O'Connor in. Stephen Ritter comes back into this game in the third period. Well, Snow is in the box for Randolph. It's coincidental minor, so I misspoke on the break. There is no power play as they call roughing penalties each way. But Randolph climbing back in with three quick goals. Sean Sylvester starting things off here in a third. Nice job as he takes the puck from behind the net, wraps it around. At the time O'Connor was in net, he didn't quite slide across quick enough. And then again, backhand slips it right between the legs. That's Snow with the second Randolph goal, and then just good hard work as the shot comes from the point. Rossi shoots, redirected in by Lou. That put the score at 6-3, and now the tide is turning. And as I said, they actually corrected the assist. Rossi and Pensinger, as I called it, do get the assist on the last goal by Michael Lou. But here comes Randazzo, winds up on a shot, just whistles wide. Hey, Matthew Schultz now uh, sees every shot a little bit bigger coming his way as his team is back in the game. Mick, just surprising. Bergen Catholic changed their goaltender, Randolph Ditton. Pensinger takes the shot, goes wide. Pressure kept on by Lou, back to Pensinger, hit the side of the net, fans were jumping, but it bulged to hit the wrong side, it was on the outskirts. 
Kept into the point, though, nicely by Rossi. Hits the trailer. Pensinger shot. Score! That's Michael Lou. Michael Lou gets the goal. That's his second in a row. And four straight goals by Randolph. And they are back in this game. What has happened here tonight in the third period is the unthinkable. Who would think Randolph would come back with four goals in the third period? They were being dominated the first two periods. Again, it's a turnover. Nice drop pass. Uses the defenseman as a screen. Let's the shot go low to the stick side. Beats Steven Ritter. And Randolph taking command here in the third period. Another look. Quick wrist shot. Snaps it in. Ritter was down early. Gets beat low to the stick side. And boy, things are moving the other way right now. Rossi will pick up an assist, 6.49, the time of the goal. Back-to-back -back goals by Michael Rue, 13th of the year. We got a game again at 6-4. We'll see if the hitting picks up a little bit more as the pace quickens. Rodney Zimmers in his own zone, fights off the hit. He'll buckle up for the final 7.47 of this one. We got a game again. Bergen Catholic guilty of icing. The puck's going to come back down in front of Steven Ritter. This is what Randolph wants. They want face-offs deep inside the Bergen Catholic zone. Now every face-off becomes so important, and Dan May knows that. Steven Ritter has to be sharp as the face-off will be to his right. You know, did that break his concentration, Pete? Maybe when he came out of the game, relaxed a little bit? Could be. Could be the team relaxed. Going into the third period, a 6-0 lead. You figure it's in the bag. Randolph wouldn't hear of it. Lou to take the face off against Randazzo. Kind of lays there in the circle. Kept alive by Pensinger, who deflects it to the corner. They come back to the point, but it is Mahaffey who cannot keep it in. And Rossi, who has played a very nice game today, goes back and picks it up in his own end, plays back for Mahaffey. And here comes that top line again. Intercepted, though, by Grafredo. Now the neutral zone. Make that first pass coming out of your zone is so important. That sets up the whole offensive rush. Tonight, Randolph's a little off making that play. Well, as we get a chance here, let's give you the scoring by periods. As Bergen Catholic started off 3-0, added three more in the second to take a commanding six-goal lead, but then four unanswered goals by Randolph. And they're right back in the game here in period number three. And Mick, they came in succession, one after the other after the other, really putting Bergen Catholic on their heels. On the draw. Good hustle here by Sylvester. Keeps the puck alive for Randolph along the boards, and Bay helps out back to the point. What a shot by Rossi, but it whistles high and wide. And now the puck cleared, but Rossi knocks it down and keeps the pressure on. Does a nice job of spinning away from one check, but gave it away. And here comes Randazzo. Intercepted, though, by Sylvester. And there's a time change, and Bay could have a break. He comes across the line in a two-on-one. Going to take the shot himself. Save. Big save by Ritter. That could be the save of the game. Great save by Ritter as he held his ground. It was a two-on-one. He had to either take the shooter or the open man. He did what he's supposed to do. He took the shooter. What a great move on the two-on-one. Randolph getting a golden opportunity here to pull this into one goal. Alex Faye coming over as he beats the man along the wall. Am I passing? Am I shooting? Nope, I'm going to take the shot. Good save by Ritter, and then the rebound is cleared away. It looked like he tried to go five holes. Ritter was sliding across. He had the open area, but I think he caught a piece of it with his stick, and he was able to keep it out. 6.29 to go. Bergen Catholic with a 6-4 advantage in this one. Randazzo out for every major faceoff, but that time, Randolph wins the draw. Pensinger, almost broken up by Bendazian, gets it ahead to Snow. There's a hit, but here comes Pensinger, comes across the line, trying to get a shot away. And that's just sticked aside by Ritter. Now right in front, shot, save Ritter. Oh, Pensinger did a nice job of setting up Snow. They keep the pressure on, though. And a turnaround goes to the far corner. Jason May back on the ice, trying to clear, but could not. Snow keeps it ahead. The return pass in the slot. Pensinger is not to the ice. Randazzo has it. He'll try to clear the zone. Bergen Catholic looking to come out, and they finally do with Tom Keogh in the neutral zone. Boy, did Bergen Catholic dodge a bullet there. Great setup by Pensinger. Snow in front of the net. Tremendous save by Ritter. Pensinger 
Rink wide pass. And now here comes Snow at the red line. He comes across. He's going to wind up, takes the shot, juggled, and the rebound came right out in front by Ritter, and it's cleared away by Jason May. Mick, I think Ritter, a little shaky right now, doesn't have the confidence he had early in the game, not handling the shots well, not handling the rebounds well. This puck is shot the length of the ice to say no icing, and they better hurry up because here comes Matt Rutsch. Rutsch doing a nice job of hitting his man into the boards as play continues. Back to the point. Here's a shot. Nice save on its way under the goalie, and it finally goes wide. It was caught by Schultz. He dropped it near the goal line, but it was not poked in. Nick, from our angle, we saw it sitting about three inches away from the goal line, but nobody could handle it. Ooh, juggling save here by Ritter, and he holds on. The Randolph bench is really charged up. Penslinger and company keeping the pressure on and leading the cheers. Al Finnerty. Hey, why not? 6-4 our game. Take a deep breath. It's all going to be fine. Come on, take a deep breath. Keep on breathing. In sports, they say it can be a game of inches. Look how close this puck comes from being in the net. You saw it right there. You saw a few legs. You saw a stick whack at it, and then it just skithers wide on the right side of your screen behind the net. That's how close Bergen Catholic came to scoring their seventh goal of the evening. Well, the fans are charged up, and that man uh, trying to compose himself. Well, now, Mick, does he second-guess himself for the change of the goaltenders in the beginning of the third period? What do you think? Randolph using two lines, and they have been able to turn up the pressure on Bergen Catholic. More shots on goal. Well, they always say, put the puck on the cage and good things will happen. They've scored four. Pensinger's shot just goes wide, but Rossi's going to keep it in. He's got a T1 up. Rossi, well, banks it off the boards to Pensinger. Pensinger gives up for Snow in a corner. Snow looking for a return pass. Got it to Pensinger. Broken up, however. And it comes back the other way. Here comes Gafrido, who has four goals today. Across the line with Lunau. Two on two. Trying to duck in. Nice job by Rossi to take him off the play. Tremendous job by Rossi playing the man. But right in front. Here's a shot. Oh, big save by Schultz on the doorstep by Lunau. That could be a game saver. Schultz quickly moving the left glove up. Got a piece of that puck. That would have been devastating if they scored right there, Bergen Catholic. Well, Snow comes back the other way now for Randolph. Puts it in the corner. O'Donnell tries to tie it up. Play continues. As Snow gets it behind the net. Wrap around through it right in front, but nobody there. Kept it at the point, though. Mahaffey threw it forward, and finally it's clear. Mick, the other night we talked about the ice being tilted. We blamed it on the Zamboni driver. That guy must have came back for the third period because this whole period has been played to our left in front of the Bergen Catholic end. 6-4, Bergen Catholic. Time to factor now for Randolph. We're down to 3.32 and the clock moving. And here comes a burst of speed by Keogh. He's going to try to get to the corner first, and he does. He touches the puck, and play continues. Faye goes in and tries to dig it out. Bodies crashing. Bendazian knocks his man down. Bendazian has it behind it at the backhand. Looking to put on the brakes, throws it back to the top, to the point. Here's a shot deflected up and over. The goal, I don't think Schultz got a piece of it. It was deflected high. I think it was deflected twice, once by the offensive player of Bergen Catholic, and I think it just hit Schultz. I don't think he moved on it. it looked like it might have hit his blocker, but either way, they're bending but not breaking. Randolph staying in this game. Here comes Mahaffey. Fans on their feet. The puck comes to center ice. Now shot in by Alex Fay. Play continues with 2.45 and a clock moving. Valbano goes down hard on the corner. He's trying to dig it out. Molly picked up by Randazzo. Nice job of faking three players. He gets the puck ahead. Randazian will wind up. Takes a long drive and a glove save from almost center ice by Schultz. And Matt Schultz holds on. Matt Schultz using that big left glove. Doing a great job this evening. Watch the scoring chance. The one-on-one -on -one defense. That's Jofredo being stopped beautifully by Tony Rossi. And then... Whenever you lose control, it's your goaltender that helps you out. Watch this one. Bing gets a little bit of the glove on it, just denying the Bergen Catholic goal. Schultz has stood tall since his insertion in the second period for Randolph. 
Bergen Catholic jumped out to the 6-0 lead, but now it's 6-4. to Four third period goals for the Rabbits, and here they come again. Here is Snow across the line on the left wing, trying to turn a corner, goes to the backhand, it just goes wide, and the net comes off the mooring, and play stops. Randolph just keeps coming one after the other. They're not giving up. A little over two minutes to go. That time, Snow coming in on the left side after getting the pass from Penzinger. Watch right as it comes into your face. Right there, boom. Players, goaltenders, everything into the net. The faceoff, though, will stay in the Bergen Catholic end, so Ritter has to collect himself and get ready for another draw. That time, Snow, instead of going to his backhand and trying for the far side, he went to his backhand and tried to go to the short side, and he paid the price. Look at some of this other action in front. Watch. Oh, what a hit there. Alex Faye did not have his head up. He had his head down, and boy, did he pay the price. Now, Bendazian knocked him down. We said that Bendazian, one of the biggest hitters you're going to see on the ice here today, and he's proven it. But now Ritter has to collect himself. Randolph fans on their feet. And this guy has not got into the scoring column yet. Hensinger, as far as goals are concerned, but he's on the ice for this faceoff now against Randazzo, wins the draw. And it's going to be intercepted, though, by Lunau, and he will skate at the center. Doug Lunau winds up on a drive. It's high up and over the net. Now right back in by Grafrido. John Grafrido with four goals in this championship game. He was a difference early. Randolph, the four and answer goals in the third period to make a late charge to come back, but not a factor, just 1.50 on the clock right now. If you're Randolph, do you pull your goaltender? If you are, you're going to have to do it real soon because you need to put two past Ritter to get into overtime. It's probably the thing you have to do. But now as the puck comes in and out of the zone, we have a whistle to play offside. 1.39, you got to roll the dice sooner or later. How long will Matt Schultz stay in the cage before he makes that dash to the bench. We're down by two as soon as the puck goes into the zone. Richie McLaughlin checking your scoreboard up front, up top, taking a look at the times. We look at the shots on goal, just about even as Randolph has really picked it up in the third period, 15 to nine. And now Randolph takes their timeout. That's a smart move. Now they're gonna coordinate the effort of when Schultz will come out of the net and who that extra skater will be jumping on the ice. Now we have seen two Great coaches in this game with two great teams. A 6-0 lead for Bergen Catholic. All right, they made some goaltending changes. They played the third line a little bit more to start the third period. You now you see a team like Randolph under Rich McLaughlin. They don't give up. The doors opened a little bit after one goal. They keep the pressure on. They score four unanswered. He made a goaltending change, elected to stay with Schultz, a senior who comes off the bench and has played just absolutely brilliantly through the last two periods. And now this guy here, Dan May, getting his team geared back up to fight off the challenge. Big, great game tonight. Shame on anybody who went to sleep after the second period tonight and didn't stay up to watch this third period. They missed one hell of a comeback by Randolph. You're absolutely right. But that's what this game's all about. You know, that's why these teams have made it all the way to the Meadowlands. These are the best teams in New Jersey as far as public and parochial are concerned. Scoring by period, that big 4-0 in the third period by Randolph, and the Rams are back in it. 24-5, and and how long before Schultz makes his way to the bench? That's the question. Schultz, the senior, nice opportunity for him. Good job by McLaughlin getting him in the game, and now he's played big here in the third period because he has had to come up with some big saves. Hensinger wins the draw. There was someone holding a stick. Snow did not break in. Good job by Luna to slow him down. Back to the point. Rossi takes a shot. Oh, nice play by Graffito, and the goal is empty as Schultz makes the dash to the bench. The sixth attacker is on, and this puck shot the length of the ice, not near the cage, but we have icing. Well, Joe Frito, who scores four goals this evening, gives up his body as he goes down to block the shot from Rossi, from the point. Minute 20 to go, you have to give it your all. John Gifrido, just a sophomore. Four goals in the Tournament of Champions final. Bergen Catholic just one minute, 20 seconds away from their second Tournament of Champions. And take a look at both goalies as they kind of look on now and hope the forwards can Maybe come up with some magic in the final 116. Hensinger along the boards, trying to keep the puck in, and does. Snow won't let it out. 
neither will Mahaffey. Looking for a frozen puck and a faceoff, possibly. Time still going. We're down to the last minute of the play. And Pensinger comes up with it. He'll wind up with a drive. Up and over the net. I don't think Ritter saw that. He was flinching as it went over his head, but he didn't see that all the way. 48 seconds left. Nice job by Rossi to keep the puck into the point. Throws it to the net. Oh, it's right in front. It bounced away and finally comes out of the zone. Ritter was stunned. The puck hit him. It was sitting in the crease. He was looking left and right. He had no idea where it was. It was right beneath his feet. May has the puck knocked back in the zone. Turnaround, no clear. And here is Snow. It rolls right in the slot. Snow going to come to the corner with 24 seconds left. The sixth attacker out there for Randolph. They're down by two. Shot. Stick save by Ritter. Comes to the near boards. Hensinger and company trying to keep it in. Lou crashes to the boards. 12 seconds left. They're going to run out of time as Randolph, but they put up a pretty gallant fight. Puck is cleared along the dasher with five seconds to go. Rossi's going to go back and pick it up, but time will wind out as Bergen Catholic wins the championship. hugs as Steven Ritter and company win the championship but what a gallant fight by Randolph and Dan Pensinger he salutes his fans and why not they were down six nothing fought all the way back and lose it by two six to four a beat shots on goal for the game 29 apiece that's just because Randolph really poured it on in the third period they didn't stop to the final whistle they kept coming Pull their goaltender, pressure in front of Ritter. They gave it their all tonight. Well, tears of joy on one side and maybe tears of sorrow on the other. But you know what? Randolph's going to feel like maybe they didn't lose this game. Maybe they just ran out of time. But father and son, a chance to congratulate each other as the Mays get their second championship. They won it all back in the year 2001. And here in 2003, Bergen Catholic, the New Jersey Tournament of Champions winner once again. And Bergen Catholic did what only three other schools have done, Seton Hall, CBA, and Montclair, and that's to win all three, the Triple Crown, the League Championship, the Parochial Championship, and then the overall Tournament of Champion game. We were treated to one heck of a third period comeback. Jason May and his team jumping out to a 6-0 lead through two periods, but Randolph, a great fight. Both teams can hold their head up high. Both teams fought valiantly for that trophy. The guys in white are going to take it home. Once again, our final score, 6-4, to four, as Bergen Catholic wins this game and a Tournament of Champions final. Hope you enjoyed the coverage. Now for Mary Beth Petriello and Pete Cacciato, I'm Mick Monaghan. Again, Bergen Catholic 6-4 over Randolph for the Tournament of Champions final. So long, everyone. Get all the action on the ice with NHL Cool Shots, now on Yes. It's the weekly pro hockey show featuring the explosive shots, big hits, and great saves, plus profiles of different NHL stars each week. NHL Cool Shots, coming up next, right here on Yes. Look, Steph, it's adorable. Oh. Hi there. Hi, what kind is it? It's a mix, actually. Oh. Part charcoal, part gas. Does it do any tricks? So yeah. Cool, actually, you? it switches from gas to charcoal in just a few seconds. <clears throat> Listen, Steph and I are having a party tonight. Why don't you stop by? The Charbroil 2-in-1 Charcoal Gas Grill. It's man's new best friend. What a chick magnet. The dominating force in European soccer, Manchester United, pursues another English Premier League title on Yes. Thursday at 9.30, the Red Devils take on Aston Villa. Then get the latest with Red Hot News plus Man U versus Fulham. Thursday on Yes. Before... CN8, the Comcast Network. Recognized this year for broadcast excellence and proud recipient of 32 Tele Awards. Award-winning television. CN8 Smart TV for curious people.
If you or someone you know is receiving cable service without paying, things are about to change. Our auditors will be in your area soon with new, effective ways of detecting cable theft. Call this number now to sign up for cable legally, no questions asked. You can also call this number to confidentially report cable theft. Call now. Avoid embarrassment and prosecution. Technogenesis. Technogenesis. Smart growth. The battle to contain suburban sprawl. Join me each week for a look into the future of science and technology. Technogenesis. Technogenesis. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern on CN8. Let's rock and roll. Oh, did he get hit? I might. What kind of lens is this? Oh, I think that's good enough. I got the mic. I'm over here. Wow. This is pretty cool. Ah! Oh, brother. Look at this. <laughs> NHL Cool Shots. This week, Vancouver's Todd Bertuzzi tells us life's a breeze thanks to line mate Marcus Naslin. Oh, I got I got the easiest job in hockey. I got to get the puck to a pure goal scorer. It's not that tough. It's just a matter of me just trying to use my size to my advantage, trying to create a little bit of space for Marcus and give Marcus a split, uh, split second open, and it's in the back of the net for sure. And it's do or die for teams living on the edge. They are one desperate hockey club. It has to happen this homestand or their season and their dream of making the playoffs this year is going to be over. And now for this week's Eastern Conference action. We start in Ottawa where the Senators and Bruins were both looking for the extra point in overtime. Hosa now at the blue line. He's the ball. Right at ball. After the overtime loss, LaPointe and the Bruins were heating up against the Devils. Back to the point, here's LaPointe, shooting one, score! Up the wing, LaPointe, a drive, he scores! Martin LaPointe, and it's 2-1 Boston. Here it's been in front, of another goal! LaPointe gets the hat trick! Against Florida, Boston was looking to move closer to the sixth spot. Stolen, Bruins, short-handed break, two on nine. Axelson scores! 15,000 rising as one, saluting the play of the Bruins. For the moment, they have closed to within one point of sixth place in the Eastern Conference playoff race. In Tampa Bay, a peaceful evening outside, but inside, all lightning. And that corner has some room, working around a pick. He's got the final horn. After the victory, the Lightning and Sabres faced off in Buffalo. Maxine the bit again off pass, knocked down by Prospel, the Cavalier to Prospel, cutting it back, and he scores! Vinny Prospel on the turnover, set up by the Cavalier. Prospel set up behind it, Andrew Chuck shooting, scores! He fires it short side on Norinen, and Dave Andrichuk stands alone. In the number 11 spot of the all-time goal-scoring list, now with 611. Already with two wins this week, Tampa Bay traveled to Montreal and won 2-1, to one, moving them into first place in the Southeast Division and the third seed overall. In Edmonton, Blake and the Islanders were slipping away from the Oilers. By Blake on Steos. Blake eludes another, turns, penalty coming up, Blake shoots, he scores! What a move by Jason Blake! And the New York Islanders have a king-sized win here in Edmonton. And the Islanders came up with a... With a